Hi, my name is Anna. I'm a second year STP student. Uh, my focus is in cardiology and I'm training at Barts Health NHS Trust. So a little bit of an introduction from me, my qualifications and my background. So I completed my undergraduate degree in sport and exercise science, and then I completed my master's in exercise physiology. At this stage, I wasn't totally certain where I wanted to progress within my career. So I decided to get some work experience at, at a different role before applying for the STP within healthcare. And with this, I was able to build on my clinical and professional experience alongside some leadership skills in the latter stages of this role. However, I would like to emphasise that there is a wide variety of applicants and STP trainees across all of the hospitals. And this really does reflect that there are some individuals who have either finished university looking for their next step or there are those who are seeking maybe a change in their career or a progression within their career and the STP can definitely accommodate for all of these. So how to make an application stand out? It is really important that you read all of the national school's documents and information online. This will really allow you to learn more about yourself, learn more about the STP, if kind of you align to what the STP provides uh, alongside the various specialties, the direct versus in-service vacancies as those two pathways differ slightly. A particular area to focus on is the person specification and the job description. And within your application, align your answers and supporting information to the key information provided. This is really going to help keep your application both focused and specific. By reading the person specification and the job description, you're going to be able to understand if you have the relevant skills and knowledge required for the STP. And within this person specification, look closely at the essential and the desirable criteria and make sure you refer your supporting evidence to this. So for example, you could reflect on your values, which could be teamwork, professionalism, equality, diversity, for example. This truly is your time to demonstrate and reflect on your work experience. So this could be voluntary work. It could be through experiences at university. It could even be work that you've obtained outside of university. Link any prior experiences that you've had where possible also to the specific aspects of the specialism. But just make sure you emphasise why the STP, why the specialism and why now. A really key part is to make sure you align your work to the NHS values, and these include working together for patients, respect and dignity, commitment to quality of care, compassion, improving lives, and just making sure that everyone counts. So it is important to note at this stage that sometimes quality can actually be more favourable than quantity. And if we were to put this in an example, um, let's say two, you wrote two to three well-explained experiences with some reflection in detail. This is going to be more valuable than 10 experiences with no reflection. Um, I believe that showing development and a willingness to learn is often always better than trying to evidence perfection. I think it's important at this point to note that AI tools are not recommended for generating your STP supporting information. This is because the application is designed to assess your personal motivation, your own reflections and your insight. And this needs to be written authentically. So do avoid using those AI tools. It needs to be an authentic piece of work for this application. So how to prepare for the SJT? So for the situational judgment test, have a close read of the national school's information on the website. There is a lot of information there for you to have a read through and it details areas like the format of the test, what to expect and how to prepare. The situational judgment test is an assessment of your judgment in work relevant situations. So you're ranking these scenario responses from very appropriate to very inappropriate. There are a few practice questions available on the Pearson's website, uh, which provide you with an idea of what this test will look like. But something I did to help me further prepare for the SJT was not only completing these Pearson practice questions, but I also brainstormed scenarios which I think could occur in a hospital setting. And then I spoke to my friends and family about what would be appropriate and what would be inappropriate as a response to the scenarios. 
Um, I focused on topics including values, behaviours, professionalism, teamwork and adaptability. And I strongly believe that this actually also helped me build my confidence ahead of the test. I will be honest and say that the time allowance can be a little tight. So another piece of advice I would suggest is to really go with your gut response based on how you would react in that given scenario and then swiftly move on to the next question. You definitely don't want to be losing marks because you've unfortunately run out of time. I know you can also speak to the national school to receive extra time if permitted. However, these reasonable adjustments would need to be honoured if there is evidence to support um, and that has been provided to the national school. Although there are other resources available online which can help prepare for the SJT, I would recommend specifically just focusing on the Pearson example questions and then the information provided by the national school. There's no guarantee that these external resources are going to be either relevant or accurate for the SJT. So in that sense, it could even, I guess, mislead you slightly. And they actually also usually come at a financial cost. So my advice would be stick to Pearson's have a good read on the National School's website and maybe kind of think of some of those scenarios with yourself, your friends, your family, and think of what questions maybe could come up um, given, you know, you, the, the questions are, are linked towards hospital based scenarios. How did I choose my location and did I relocate? So I applied for the London hospitals hiring within cardiology um, as I was already living within the area. I ranked my options based on the research on the hospitals themselves within my specialism and where I could see myself working best and what would support my work-life balance best as well. However, this can be, again, very varied. Some of my colleagues have discussed they put numerous hospitals on their list and they were really willing to relocate. On the topic of relocating, um, I think it's important that if you do select a hospital which requires relocating to ensure you're really happy with this prior to accepting the position, it is very, very, very important that a work-life balance is maintained and life outside of work should be supportive, it should be fun, it should be replenishing. Um, the STP is a demanding programme and you want to make sure that you're having that switch off downtime, that time to replenish outside of work. So this is where conversations with close friends and family could be useful to understand maybe what might be reasonable and realistic for you in this sense. So how to prepare for the interview? Make sure you read all of the relevant information on the National School's website for this and be prepared to expand on any information that you provide within the interview. I would also recommend at this point, prior to going into the interview, have a reread of your application and your supporting documentation. I think this is going to help you build confidence and knowledge going into your interview. Learn more about the role of a trainee clinical scientist in your specialism and what the day to day would look like. Take a look online on the trusts and the National Schools website, which has an abundance of information on there. I would also recommend being familiar again with the NHS values and have examples ready of how these align with your experiences and your future career aspirations. If you have an interview with the trust that may be your first choice, it could also be a beneficial opportunity to do some reading on the specific hospital and maybe the key services they provide, as this shows extra eagerness and attention to detail. Many of you will have likely heard this already, but a star approach to your interview answers is really going to help keep your responses succinct, but also relevant. And a tip I would recommend is to, again, practice with close friends, family. He may be able to provide you with some constructive feedback and help improve your responses prior to the interview. But it is important to explain that you are not expected to be an expert. However, it is most likely expected that you will have an understanding of the basic principles around the nature of your specialism and the professional behaviours which are integrated within the NHS values. And I firmly believe that instead of covering any mistakes in the past, use these to your advantage by discussing how you've learned from this and how you will improve for the future, as this really demonstrates a growth mindset and a willingness to learn. And these are key skills required for the STP. And one piece of advice for applicants. So my biggest piece of advice is to really take the time to read about the STP and be truly sure it's the right step for you. 
there is an abundance of information online to look into, and this will help you to understand if the program is suitable for you. The STP is a fantastic program with so much learning and opportunity. However, it is also full on and it is a very demanding program. So it's really important to know you're ready for the challenge and you're motivated to commit to it. I hope this video helps and best of luck to all of you applying for the STP.